There is one more spot in our lineup that the team has been working really hard to fill. <laughs> yes! To create a product that will take Mac further than it's ever gone before. And I am so excited and thrilled to show it to you now. This is the new Mac Pro, and it's incredible. It has a truly gorgeous design and remarkable performance to match. So let's start with the processor. Now we've designed this new Mac Pro for our customers who need the ultimate in CPU performance. For tasks like production rendering, or playing back hundreds of virtual instruments, or simulating an iOS app on multiple devices at once. So we're using a brand new Intel Xeon processor, and it has up to 28 cores. And to get every last ounce of performance out of this processor, we're giving it over 300 watts of power and a massive heat sink for cooling. So this means it can run fully unconstrained all the time. Now we also have an extremely high performance memory architecture. Six channels of super fast ECC memory in 12 DIMM slots enable an incredible 1.5 terabytes of system memory. So one of the most critical areas of expansion is graphics. Graphics performance is so important for tasks like animating 3D film assets or compositing 8K scenes or building complex 3D environments. We're going to offer multiple graphics options, starting with the Radeon Pro 580X, a great all-around graphics card. But for a big upgrade in graphics performance, the Mac Pro can be configured with AMD's Radeon Pro Vega 2. Now, Vega 2 delivers 14 teraflops of graphics compute and 32 gigabytes of memory with an insane one terabyte per second of memory bandwidth. But we didn't stop there, because with the increased headroom of the MPX module, we can actually use two Vega 2 GPUs for double the teraflops, double the, the, the uh, memory, and double the memory bandwidth. This is, quite simply, the world's most powerful graphics card. Now, the new Mac Pro is going to start with an eight-core Xeon processor, 32 gigabytes of memory, Radeon Pro 580X, and a 256 gigabyte SSD. Now, if you look at other systems configured with comparable components, you'll see that they cost around $8,000. The new Mac Pro will start at $59.99. Like the Mac Pro, the design is stunning, and every element is built for pros. And it's the most incredible panel we have ever made. It's a 32-inch LCD display with over 20 million pixels. And with two 18 pixels per inch, it's a 6K retina display. <laughs> it's over 40% larger than the iMac 5K display, giving pros even more room for their tools and their content. Those images are going to have gorgeous, incredibly nuanced, cont nuanced contrast and incredible one million to one contrast ratio. So that's the new Pro Display XDR. It's the only display in the industry that delivers every feature on a pro's wish list and more. The Pro Display XDR will be $49.99 for the display itself. And the nano texture version will be $59.99. We are bringing dark mode to iOS. I'd love to show it to you live now. All right. <laughs> OK, let's take our first live look at iOS. Now, here it is in its traditional light appearance, this gorgeous new wallpaper. But now, let's begin our descent into darkness. <laughs> look at that, the gorgeous dark wallpaper. Our notifications look great. Let's take a look at our widgets. Just awesome. Let's take a look at some apps. We'll start with news. Check it out with a gorgeous, dark appearance. So nice. And your calendar, your daily events have never looked so awesome with this really beautiful palette. And notes. Look at this refined texture. It's really fantastic. Let's take a trip into messages. So you see how your images, your emoji, they all look just fantastic. And of course, the keyboard. 
with an extra refined new dark appearance and some new tricks because now when you type, you can swipe. Just like that. Now, iOS 13 is a huge release packed with lots of capabilities, but we know that nothing is more important to our iPhone users than performance. So this year, we work top to bottom in the system, making everything faster that you do the most. Things like unlocking with Face ID, now 30% faster. We've changed the way that we're packaging apps on the App Store. And when this rolls out in the fall with iOS 13, you'll see that your downloads are now 50% smaller and updates 60% smaller. But what's really incredible is the effect it has on app launch speed. It's up to twice as fast in iOS 13. But of course, there's much more to iOS 13, starting with apps. Let's start with Safari, Mail, and Notes. Now, Safari has new options to quickly change text sizing and as per website preferences. Mail gets desktop class text formatting controls, including support for rich fonts. And Notes gets this beautiful new gallery view, support for shared folders, and much more. Next, I want to turn to Login. We've all seen buttons like this, asking us to use a social account login to get a more personalized experience with an app. And these logins can be used to track you. So we wanted to solve this, and many developers do too. And so now we have the solution. It's called Sign In with Apple. <laughs> sign In with Apple is the fast, easy way to sign in without all the tracking. A simple API allows a developer to put a sign in with Apple button right in their app. You just tap it and you're authenticated with Face ID on your device, logged in with a new account without revealing any new personal information. Now, some apps may want your name and maybe even an email to send you information when you're outside the app. Now, we do allow them to request this information, but check this out. You can choose to share your actual email address, or you can choose to hide it. And when you do, we'll create a unique random address that forwards to your real address. A lot of love for random addresses here. And that's good news, because we give each app a unique random address. And this means you can disable any one of them at any time when you're tired of hearing from that app. It's really great. It's called Memoji Stickers. Now, instead of expressing yourself like this with emoji in your conversations, you can now do it like this. We automatically create a sticker pack for you for each of your Memoji. Now, of course, you can use them in messages, but we've also incorporated them right alongside emoji in the system keyboard. So you can use them in apps like Mail, or your favorite other apps, like WeChat. And we've made these usable not just in more apps, but also on more devices. Because while actually animating a Memoji puppet with your face requires a device with a true depth camera system, Memoji stickers and support for the Memoji editor is now supported for all devices with an A9 chip or later. Now let's talk about apps. Now these are designed for quick interactions on watch. First, we're bringing more Apple apps to watch. The new audiobooks app to let you listen to Apple books, and voice memos so you can easily record your thoughts. <laughs> and calculator. <laughs> and check this out, it also includes the ability to do tip calculations, including the ability to split the bill with friends. Now we're also giving developers great new tools and APIs to build great apps for Apple Watch. And we're now making it possible to create apps that run independently on the watch, no longer requiring a companion iPhone app. And now you can get extended time to access sensor data and complete sessions, like physical therapy with Kaya, or brushing your teeth with Colgate, or meditating with Calm. And 
WatchOS 6 now enables the streaming audio API. So you can go with just your watch, and you can stream great content like podcasts, music, live sports games. So with new developer tools and a new native UI framework coming this year, we're enabling a whole new generation of apps for watch. Now to make it even easier for you to discover these apps, we're excited to bring the App Store to Apple Watch. You can browse apps curated by our editorial team or find favorite apps like Headspace or Carrot Weather or Streaks, Nike Run Club. You can search the full app store using dictation or scribble or just asking Siri. And you can view product pages to see information like the app description, reviews, screenshots. And finally, you can purchase and install an app directly on your watch. So discovering and using apps in Apple Watch is going to be better ever than ever with the App Store and these really great developer tools. That's right. We're calling it iPad OS, and I'd like to give you a first look. But what if I want to get back to that last app? Could we make that super easy? The answer is yes. I can just drag from the bottom, and they fan out just like that. With just a tap, I can switch apps. Now there's one more. That's right, you can now plug in a thumb drive. <laughs> the future of Apple Music, or iTunes is not one app, but three. Apple Music, Apple Podcasts, and Apple TV. <laughs> For our next major release of Mac OS, we're moving out of the desert and to the beautiful waters off the California coast. A place for sailing, diving, and so much more. It's Mac OS Catalina. Now, Catalina includes cool new features, some really fresh new apps, and some powerful technology for developers.